Hey YouTubers, Semiviator13 aka Pyroman here once again with another video for you. Uh, first I want to thank everyone who's commented on my other videos and subscribed. Uh, I've done my best to answer your comments and questions as best I can. Keep those coming and I'll continue to do so. Uh, today's video is about building a custom overhead panel for FSX. Um, here it is in all its glory. It's not too pretty, all hand done, made out of wood. Uh, it's got 92 switches in there, total of 96 inputs because some of the switches are, uh, you know, two function uh, switches. This all started, uh, I was looking for an overhead replacement for what I was using. Uh, previously I was using the Thrustmaster MFDs and the uh, CH uh, multi-panel there, which is a nice product, but uh, they didn't look too quality. Um, you know, obviously an F-16 looking Thrustmaster MFD uh, doesn't look at home in a 737, for example. Um, so these are actually going to come out of here, both of those, uh, now that the overhead panel is done. Um, if you have skill soldering, wiring, you can build one of these. Um, it's really, really not that hard. Switches are, are not that hard to wire up. Um, this started because overhead panels on the market are anywhere from... $1,500 to ten grand, and typically they're mock-ups of uh, 737 or Airbus uh, A320 overhead panels, which I don't fly those planes too much. Uh, I like the old uh, prop planes and things of that nature. So this panel has uh, functions for all types of aircraft, from gliders, I have a uh, tow plane request and release on there, to uh, helicopters with sling controls, uh, to props, to jets, to everything in between. This is kind of my, you know, universal uh, panel with functions for just about every type of aircraft you can uh, you can think of. So. Um, with that said, I will post an image here of the wiring on this. Uh, this is built with three controller cards. Um, what's a controller card? Basically, it's what you wire the switches to, and then you plug the controller card into your USB port, which makes your PC think you just went to the store and bought a controller. Um, they show up as any other USB controller would, and then you just have to program your buttons and switches. Um, the reason I'm able to program all these switches is with FSUIPC. If you're building a cockpit, you absolutely need to have FSUIPC. Uh, one of the advantages of FSUIPC, for example, is FSX does not allow you to have more than one yoke in a setup. Uh, if you have two yokes and you try and program your second yoke in FSX, it will take the control away from your first yoke and you'll have to switch them back and forth. Uh, FSUIPC allows you to use multiple controllers for the same access, so Aerolon elevator for your yoke. Um, same thing with rudder pedals. Um, let me give you a little overview of the actual cockpit, which I haven't shown from, from a distance. So uh, it's a two-seater, as you can see. Um, it needs to be finished. A lot of wood showing and uh, not quite done yet. Uh, but basically the left seat is set up you know, for flying uh, typical aircraft from the left seat. The right seat has a yoke and a stick in it, uh, so that way you can fly helicopters from the right seat, or fighter jets, for example, or any other type of inline aircraft where the throttle is actually on your left. Obviously the throttles are uh, there in the center. It's kind of dark, I know. Uh, so my setup is made to be comfortable for uh, all types of aircraft, uh, regardless. Uh, so back to the overhead panel, the uh, Input controllers I'm using two are from GroovyGameGear.com. I'll put a link in the description. One is a Leo Bodner card. Um, I'd highly recommend the Groovy Game Gear cards over the Leo Bodner card for one simple reason, and that's price. Uh, the Leo Bodner card is 49 Great British pounds, with uh, currency exchange and international shipping. It was about 97 dollars to my door, so uh, a little expensive. Uh, the Groovy Game Gear cards have just about all the same features. A little bit different. Um, they, they're about $40, $43 shipped to my door uh, for those cards, so that's the way to go. Each input card, whether it's a Leo Bodner card or a Groovy Game, Game Gear card, will give you 32 inputs uh, as well as four axes. Uh, so, what do I have for, for controls here? Uh, we have parking brake and cabin door here. I have some LEDs on some of the switches. Uh, that's my APU. You can actually see the door open over there. Uh, alternators, generators, and then uh, your radios, comms, navs, nav GPS. Uh, no smoking seat belts, primers, engine starters, fuel booster pumps, fuel valves. Cowl flaps uh, are on an axis. You can see as I open these, I actually have a cowl flap gauge down here. 
can see the cowl flaps opening and closing with those uh, safety switches for fire extinguishers, de-icing control, structural engine, four engines, uh, prop. Everything is set up for uh, four engines. Uh, helicopter control sling, rotors, uh, prop feathering, fuel cross feed, prop sink, yaw damp, anti-skid, gyro, tail lock, uh, some miscellaneous functions, carrier operations, water operations, floats, tail hook, things of that nature. Um, and up top some of the more uh, miscellaneous options, jetway fuel truck, pushback, ATC, altimeter reset, pause, sim rate. Uh, wing fold, smoke, tow release, tow plane, drop tanks, drop objects, you get the idea. So that's just a real high level uh, overview. So again, anyone can build these. If you're on a budget, you can build these pretty cheap. Mine is uh, basically made out of wood. It's a one by one frame made into a box and then a piece of uh, hardwood flooring uh, painted flat black and then hand painted uh, the different colors on there to kind of break it up, broke everything up by section. I think it came out pretty nice. I mean, it's, you know, far from professional looking with my uh, stick on labels there, but it's certainly an improvement uh, over a keyboard or over what I was using and uh, really makes a huge difference. You know, I now have all the functions I actually need uh, at my fingertips. So that's what the uh, the wiring looks like. Um, as you can see, the wiring looks a little different between the Groovy Game Gear card and the Leo Bodner card, and that's due to uh, the Leo Bodner card. Every switch needs to have a ground run back to the Leo Bodner card, so you've got two wires going from the card to each switch, uh, whereas the Groovy Game Gear cards use a shared ground, so one wire going back to the card for the input, and then all your switch grounds get tied together and then back to one wire on the card. Hope that makes sense. Um, you can check out both those uh, those cards on their respective websites for a little more detail. Uh, the Leo Bodner cards seem to be the more common one people use in simulator setups. Um, again, you can get the Groovy Game Gear cards for a little bit cheaper, so that's what I did. Anyway, um, we'll wrap the video up with a uh, quick engine startup in this DC-4, um, and we'll go from there. Feel free to uh, ask a question, comment, and I'll do my best to get back to you.